Africa is, of course, the most mysterious continent on Earth. From Egypt to Kenya, it is littered with remnants of ancient lost civilizations and even wildlife from the ancient past that has only survived this region of the world. It is the perfect area of the world for preservation of a lost period in history. Now, for the first time, tablets of the oldest written language have been unearthed in the Sudan's massive city of the dead. Wait till you hear this. Only partially deciphered and the oldest language south of the Sahara, Nubian stones have been uncovered depicting Egyptian goddess Mat with African features. This is the first time the goddess has been depicted in such a way, and it makes you wonder why that is. Why is this the first artifact that we know of that depicts an Egyptian deity in such a way? When we consider the cradle of civilization, Egypt and Mesopotamia do in fact come first, dating back 3,500 years BC. We suggest to you, however, that these lands were rediscovered in a desolate but still advanced state by the survivors of the ancient cataclysm. Consider Gobekli Tepe. This place not only proves there was an advanced society on the earth right around the time of the last ice age, but also confirms that a profound message was left by ancient earthlings for future civilizations. What this message is, we are only beginning to uncover. Now, this is a time up until now when we've had the thought reinforced into our minds time after time that civilization on this earth existed in that of hunter-gatherers. The shockwaves of the discovery of Gobekli Tepe are still being felt today, with only around 5% of the site having been excavated. It is more than exciting to think what answers may lie at this very ancient site in Turkey. When science and religion both rule the other one out, then the entire planet is either swayed one way or the other. This hides the truth right in front of our eyes without us even knowing it. The Ark of Noah, for example, being not only the smoking gun of this theory, but the proof of an Ark in some form or another is gathering momentum across this region. Centuries of speculation are now mounting up to be fact. Gobekli Tepe is only 500 miles from the Mount Ararat, where the Great Ark was said to have come to rest, and only 300 miles where a vast underground city existed 13 stories deep and home to up to 50,000 people at a high estimate. This is evidence of an Ark, you know. We consider the Ark to be a boat, but what if it was a vast underground city where ancient civilizations could take refuge from the impending cataclysm? How did they know to prepare? Well, because they were warned to prepare for a cataclysm. It is said, for example, that Inki warned Noah to prepare for the flood by giving him blueprints to build an ark. Another place of gigantic proportions is again found in central Anatolia in Turkey, very near the underground city of Derinku. This place again is a massive underground complex city with 5 million square feet of rock having to have been excavated in this project alone. As much as 60,000 people could have been housed here at any one time, and we suggest to you that is it a possibility that these great cities could have been bunkers for the survivors of an ancient cataclysm? An ark of sorts, perhaps. Now get this, historians have dated these sites to around 1,500 years old. What's that all about? In the story of Noah's Ark, we're told that after the deluge, Noah's Ark lands at Mount Ararat in eastern Turkey, not far from Gobekli Tepe, and we see some very strange animals portrayed on the pillars, almost as if it's a record of Noah's Ark itself. Perhaps this is a place where Noah and his descendants disembarked and recreated civilization after the flood. If there really is a connection between Gobekli Tepe and the biblical story of a great flood, could the carvings found at the site be an inventory of the animals that were rescued? The surface has literally not even been scratched at this site. It is built on top of older structures all underground. It is crazy what may be discovered about the re-emergence of our civilization. And remember, the Dyson Sphere around Tabby Star in the constellation of the Swan Cygnus. 
Well, Gobekli Tepe was aligned with the star, or where the star would have been at the time of its construction. Legends of gods descending from the stars in the Cygnus constellation can be found in traditions across the globe. In the Egyptian tradition, the goddess of the night sky Nuit was said to have come directly from Cygnus. And in the Mayan tradition, it was said that the sun god Kenecheho descended from there. According to NASA astronomers, what they are observing at Tabby Star is nearly 1400 light years away. This means that given the time it takes for light from Cygnus to reach Earth, whatever object is causing the mysterious dimming was orbiting the star at least 1400 years ago and perhaps much earlier. Could this be further evidence that Gobekli Tepe was indeed built to point to the home planet of humankind's ancestors, the gods as depicted and written about across every religion on the earth, they had to have went somewhere, right? Anyway guys, as for the Nubian stone tablets, we will leave links below. Just got sidelined as to what we originally set out to talk about. Let us know what you are thinking. Comments below and thank you for watching.